Welcome to July 2024 Sun in Leo transit forecast for all 12 signs. I'm your astrologer Patricia Tate and I specialize in traditional Western and evolutionary astrology. I'm excited to share this month's astrological forecast with you. Please like and subscribe and share as it helps the channel grow. If you are new here, welcome. You can learn more about my offerings at willowgracemystic.com. For those of you who've been following me, thank you for your support and for sharing your journey with me. So let's get ready for this fiery transformation as we transition from the nurturing energy of Cancer into the heat of Leo season. So on July 22nd, 2024, the sun is now going to enter into the sign of Leo. This marks the start of this this period that is brimming with uh, powerful, vibrant, and bold energy. This shift ushers in a time that's characterized by heightened uh, creativity, uh, confidence, and this renewed zest for life. When the sun enters into Leo, which is the sign that it rules, it moves into this sign and it amplifies qualities such as our boldness or our generosity, a flair for the dramatic. Leo season really encourages us to embrace our unique talents. It's about taking leadership roles and expressing ourselves um, authentically and being generous and looking at our unique talents. This period is really ideal for pursuing your passions, enjoying life's pleasures, and for fostering all of these heartfelt connections that you want to have with others. In the first few days of Leo season, there's going to be this uh, additional layer of intensity that's going to emerge as the sun opposes the planet of Pluto that is in Aquarius. So this opposition, it can also trigger ego battles and power struggles because Leo is about the person, is about your soul and your purpose of your drive and your energy. And Pluto is the planet of transformation. It uh, wants to break everything down to the bare bones basic and be raw and authentic and real. And so this can uh, trigger some ego battles or power struggles uh, that are either within yourself or between you and others. You might face challenges that are to your sense of certainty or stability at this time. You might feel this strong desire for uh, a, wanting to control or encountering others that are trying to exert their, their power and control over you. This period is really going to test your inner strength and it may force you into leadership roles during inconvenient times. Now, on a positive note, this period also offers this trine between the sun and the north node in Aries. This is really going to highlight your personal growth, your need to truly align with your actions, with your deepest goals. This aspect really encourages you to step um, st step out and make sure that you're moving towards what resonates with your true self that's going to be supported by a sense of destiny and purpose and drive. Leo season really invites everyone to shine brightly, to share their unique gifts and talents and their light with the world. So prepare to embrace joy, creativity, opportunities that uh, come with this season while navigating any power dynamics with grace and strength. So offerings this month. I want you to check out my monthly Transit Talk webinars. These are these interactive educational sessions that are going to cover a different topic each month. To learn more and sign up, you can visit willowgracemystic.com. And don't forget to subscribe to my email list for astrological insights and upcoming specials. Now for all Leos out there, I'm offering a special discount on personalized solar return consultations. Use the code LEO10 to receive your discount, visit willowgracemystic.com to schedule your appointment today. Additionally, I offer live astrology consultations at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every other Tuesday. To reserve your spot and get in the queue, use the link below. I look forward to seeing you there. So let's dive in. So for Aries Sun and Aries Rising, I absolutely love this for you because the sun is moving into your fifth house of fun, joy, pleasure, children, childlike activities. The fifth house is where we take a risk. It's where Leo really enjoys. It's about things that we do on the weekend or ways that we can express ourselves. Now, 
this is in a beautiful harmonious aspect to the north node in your first house of self so we know that this is moving you towards your life's direction your purpose this is about you being bold being generous having a flair for the dramatic and trying new things stepping out on uh, a limb and just saying i'm going to throw caution to the wind i am ready for fun joy and pleasure now the first thing that's going to happen is the sun is going to oppose uh, pluto in your 11th house of my goals my dreams my network so there can be some kind of a confrontation that triggers an ego ego battle or a power struggle between you and work associates you and um, organizations or social groups it will be some type of a network there could be this strong desire for either them to try to control you or for you to say, I want to exert control over this or I am feeling controlled. Uh, it'll be a test for your inner strength and there could be a push for you to take a, a leadership role. So for during this, the sun moving into the fifth is really going to be highlighting your personal growth, a need to align your actions with your goals, your dreams, your hopes, your wishes. Uh, taking those steps that really resonate with your true self to be supported by your destiny and your purpose with the north node in your first house of self the first house is all about your identity it's who you are it's your appearance it's your self-interest it's your habits it's your desires and so this is you putting more play into your life so leo season is really inviting you to to shine brightly to share your talents your gifts uh, your unique light with the world to come out and embrace joy and these opportunities that this season brings to you while navigating these power dynamics with grace and strength so Aries I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where I offer full moon and new moon astrology consultations for private consultation you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com and to get updates as soon as they're released please subscribe so for Taurus Sun and Taurus Rising, you now have the Sun moving into your fourth house of your home, your foundation, its uh, family. The fourth house represents your relationships or its um it, it can be your real estate, your property, your landscaping. It can not only be the house that you live in or the town or the city, but it can also be your country. And so it's about being bold and generous and having a flair for the dramatic of what are you doing at home? What are you bringing into your home? Now, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to square Pluto. Pluto is in your 10th house of your career, your your responsibilities, your job. And so this could be this um this opposition that's saying, I need to focus more on home. I'm spending so much time at work. There could be this uh, ego battle or power struggle between your career, your job or responsibilities or leaving a lasting legacy and um, a desire for you to control your destiny having this inner strength and saying these are the leadership roles that i am willing to take now there is this harmonious aspect that goes to the north node the north node is your direction your legacy of where i need to be moving in this lifetime and it's currently focused on your 12th house the 12th house is ridding yourself of self-sabotage it is karmic debts and it's healing and renewing it's i aries i need to have some healthy boundaries of what do i need i need a safe sanctuary i need it to be fun and joyful and childlike i want to express my unique talents and i need to take these leadership roles I need to be real. I need to be authentic. I need to be who I am at home and not who everybody wants me to be. The 12th house is where we go within and we have these, um, uh, like it's, it's where we have limitation or uh, where we need to seek out yoga or meditation or tapping into um, the spiritual realm, like astral travel, astral projection, uh, ancestors or our dreams or through meditation and so this is you clearing up karma by saying I'm not going to repeat this cycle anymore I choose me this is going to be highlighting personal growth that you are doing within and creating this 
stable home environment that aligns with your actions and your deepest goals. This aspect is really going to encourage you to take the steps that you need to be who you really are, supported by a sense of destiny and purpose. So Taurus, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer full moon and new moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at Willow Grace Mystery. Com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Gemini Sun and Gemini Rising, the Sun is now moving into your third house of communication, networking, making new friends. I love the third house for you because it's all about your siblings, your neighbors, your cousins. It's you in your community, either taking a class or taking a workshop or traveling somewhere that's close. It's networking but it's closer to home. It's how you are gaining new skills. It's news and gossip. It's you at the dog park or you at the grocery store. The sun moving into the third house is really embracing bold new ways of communicating with other people. It's truly the house of communication, technology, and travel, but everything is going to be closer to home. It's in a harmonious aspect to your first house of self, so it's promoting who you are. Now, the first thing it's going to do is oppose Pluto. So we know that there's going to be some kind of an opposition that says you need to transform uh, something that has to do with higher education. Um, the, the ninth house brings in topics of cross-cultural experiences with foreign people, places, and things. This could be through legal matters or through publishing. The ninth house is access to wisdom and learning, and it's about our ethics and morals. The ninth house brings in topics that have to do with either teaching, learning. So there can be this um, opposition where there, there's going to be an ego battle or um, a power struggle with something that has to do with information that you are either bringing in or information that you want to share. This could be a challenge uh, with a desire for somebody to control what you say or what you do, or you feeling that you are uh, being controlled or somebody's exerting control over you. The period is really going to test your inner strength and may force you into a, a leadership role um, that could be somewhat inconvenient. It will be short-lived and then afterwards will push you into a, a beautiful time of exploring your authentic self. There's also going to be this beautiful trine to your north node in your uh, 11th house of your dreams, your goals, and who do you network with. The 11th house brings in topics of who I am connected to, where I gain friendship, or like your star family. It's collective activities. It's how do you help and support the collective? Where do you give of your time? It's also work groups or workmates. And so the sun moving into this is being bold and being generous and sharing your unique talents with other people. It's stepping into a leadership role and expressing yourself authentically. Uh, this uh, will be a time that can highlight your personal growth in that you need to align with your actions of what are your goals and who can you, who's going to support you with reaching those goals. This aspect is saying you need to take steps that resonate and are supported by uh, destiny and purpose of aligning with your aspirations, organizations, shared creativity, anything that has to do with collective activities that uh, explore the ways that you communicate with others. Remember, the third house is all about how you say things and where you connect with others and where you talk and exchange ideas. And Gemini, this is right up your alley. This is like being flirty. This is like open communication. So Leo season is really going to invite you to shine brightly, to share your unique gifts and talents with others, to be prepared for joy and creativity and these opportunities that this season brings all the while navigating the power dynamics with grace and strength. So Gemini, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer full moon and new moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe.
So for Cancer Sun and Cancer Rising, now Leo is moving into your second house of your personal resources. This is your time to shine. It's about bringing attention to your money, your resources, your skill set, your talents. The second house revolves around all topics that have to do with your possessions, simple pleasures, uh, mental, emotional, spiritual resources. The second house is how do you support yourself? And this is being bold, being generous, um, sharing out there. Now, the first thing that's going to happen is it has to, um, it will oppose the planet of Pluto. Pluto is uh, power struggles and your resources that are tied up with other people's. It's in your eighth house of, of uh, alimony, child support, debt, taxes, wills. Uh, it has everything to do with uh, savings, bankruptcy, losses. Uh, the Pluto brings in the topic of we have to transform uh, where you, your skill set, your personal money, and transform and separate what you have with other people. As as the sun oppose, uh, opposes Pluto, the opposition can trigger these ego battles about what is mine, what is yours, and then uh, this could be a challenge of creating a stable um, skill set, money, um, something that has to do with your job, your career. The second house really brings in what is what what are your movable resources? What is, what is your property? What are your finances? Your attitude towards it, and you taking a good hard look at your financial condition, and needing to have control over your resources. And there could be this tug um, uh, over strength of you having to step it up and create stability from what you have. Now, what's great that's coming from this is the North Node in your, your 10th house of your job, your career, your legacy, your reputation, you being seen as an authority figure. The 10th house is your achievement. It's your responsibilities. And with the North Node here, the Sun is going to be activating this opportunity to align your actions with your deepest goals for a need for security. Uh, this aspect is really going to encourage you to step into your divinity, your, your true self. How do you support yourself? What does your destiny offer you? What is the purpose of things that you have gone through, the resources that you share with other people, and how are you manifesting to the best of your ability and possibly expressing yourself authentically and taking on uh, new leadership roles, whether you want to step into them or not. This Leo season is really going to invite you to shine, to step out of your, your crab shell and to say, um, I have a unique light. I have unique resources and I need to um, embrace the joy and the creativity of these opportunities that the season's going to bring all while navigating the power dynamics that can come from the opposition of Pluto with strength and grace. So Cancer, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer full moon and new moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Leo, Sun, and Leo rising, this is all about you, you being in the limelight. Uh, the first house represents you, your mind, your body, your spirit, things that you're creating. It is your personality, your identity. This is you shining, uh, being the center of attention. Uh, this is uh, your ego, your self-interest. It's things that you want to start, being bold, being generous, um, having a flair for the dynamic, and possibly taking leadership roles and um, sharing your talents with others other people expressing yourself authentically now as soon as the sun moves into your first house it's going to oppose pluto in your partnership sector so pluto remember is the planet of birth death and rebirth it's the planet of transformation and the seventh house brings in topics of you plus other people it's the plus one house you with clients relationships with best friends significant others partners I'm also going to bring in open enemies and exes because this is an opposition. And so there can be 
topics that are brought in that it can trigger an ego battle between you and a friend, you and a business partner, you and an ex. Uh, this could be a power struggle either within yourself that you feel or uh, within other people. You might face challenges where you're not feeling on stable ground with this partner and feeling this strong desire to want to have control and wanting to have stability. And this could also mean that somebody else, you may feel like somebody else wants to have control over you and your personal assets. Now, this time period, it can really test your inner strength. It can force you into leadership roles uh, that are with um, clients or business partners or in, again, relationship. The seventh house represents legal matters and how do you handle them? And it's about trust and connection and it's our uh, promises, whether they're written or unwritten, that we make to others. And so first comes the power struggle and then comes the gift that comes with it. So the North Node, now you're going to be in a, a trine with the North Node. This is um, an opportunity that says, I want to highlight the direction in which you're supposed to be going to share your gifts and talents with other people. The ninth house is um, education, it's philosophy, it's religion, it's beliefs. It's mixing and mingling with other people from other places. The, the ninth house represents foreigners and it's about long distance travel and these cross-cultural experiences that can bring about education or adventure. And so having the North Node there says that what you are going to experience now is to you is, is to have you align with your actions of your deepest goals, your deepest dreams, your deepest hopes. This aspect is really encouraging you to take the steps that resonate with who you are at the core, your identity. It's your first house. And how do you support this um, with uh, purpose? Leo season with this in your first house is a time for you to shine brightly and to share your unique gifts and your talents and your light with everybody. Um, prepare to embrace the joy, the creativity, uh, these opportunities that the sun in your first house brings you with this season, all while navigating the power dynamics with grace and strength. So Leo, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer full moon and new moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Virgo, Sun and Virgo Rising, the sun is now moving into your 12th house. This is the house of solitude, the house of taking time out for um, renewal and healing from within. The 12th house is our subconscious mind. It's where we go to yoga or meditation, or we tap into our dreams or the Akashic records or astral travel, astral projection. The 12th house is our connection to the spiritual realm, to your higher power, your divine, your God, your goddess, your Yahweh, Allah, Buddha, Buddha, whatever it is that is your higher power, it's you tapping in to heal. It's about spiritual retreats. It's you taking time to say, I need to withdraw and I need to work on the private inner world of myself, paying attention to the messages that I receive from my spirit guides or my ancestors. Um, I need to deal with my subconscious issues. I need to overcome limitations either put on to myself, by myself, or from others. As soon as the sun moves into Leo, it will oppose Pluto in your sixth house of your daily habits. This is your mental, physical, spiritual health and well-being. Taking care of yourself, really bring to the forefront the need for you to take time out, to rest, relax, and tap into what do you really need. This opposition can bring about possible ego battles or power struggles that you may feel where you give of your time to others because Pluto being in the sixth house is not only how I 
take care of myself, but it's how I feel of service to others. And sometimes when we are taken advantage of, we feel like it is not a volunteering anymore, but like that I have to do this. Like this becomes an act of not my free will. And so there can be these uh, opportunities to face these challenges of, I need to feel strong in control in how I feel like people have control over me or how I can control um, things. This, this is going to be a test of inner strength for your mental health, your spiritual health, your, your well-being, forcing you into possibly a leadership role of taking control over your own personal destiny of your, your mental health. Remember that the 12th house is also our private inner world where it represents self-sabotage. And so it's other people's afflictions that they put upon us, like karmic debts. And this will be an opportunity to say, uh, because it's always been done doesn't mean that I need to do that. And I need I need joy, pleasure, and I need to take bold action in order to do this. I need to take the leadership role and, and express my authentic self openly. Now what's going to support you is the North Node in your eighth house. And so this could be in connection with partners, with uh, this could be with family members that you have karmic ties to. And it's releasing these karmic ties and wanting to have these deep, bonding experiences with people. The eighth house brings in topics of sexuality and tapping into what makes you feel good. It is also about, um, uh, it's deep and psychological of where we want to have these bonding experiences with people on a level that's just more, I always say, I don't want tissue paper com uh, you know, connections with people. I want real raw and authentic. And so you're going to have this opportunity for this personal growth that people may not see. And you're going to have this opportunity to align with your deepest goals, your deepest desires, and to heal and renew, taking time out to uh, mentally, physically uh, heal and renew your mind, body, and spirit. Uh, this aspect is really going to encourage you to take those big steps that resonate with who are you and showing the world your true self, supporting um, your destiny, your purpose with grace and strength as you move through this. So Virgo, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer full moon and new moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Libra Sun and Libra Rising, the Sun is moving into your networking sector. This is right up your alley. The Sun is you being bold and being generous and having a flair for dramatic. And the 11th house is who you are connecting and aligning yourself up for your hopes and your dreams and your goals. The 11th house is like the networking house of, of who you connect with, with teams or peers or people that you have these shared experiences with with, with um, shared creativity or social circles. The 11th house brings in topics of shared beliefs, networking. Um, I always say that it's also like kindred spirits. It's where we volunteer and it's also where we have these humanitarian efforts or we, we support other people with collective activities. And so this is you being yourself. It is an amazing opportunity to get back out there and take these uh, leadership roles and, and showcasing your unique talents and expressing yourself um, authentically. Now, as soon as it moves into your uh, 11th house, it will oppose Pluto in your fifth house of your children. The fifth house represents lovers, investments. It's where we take a risk. And so it's fear of taking a risk from being hurt before or time taken away from children, or it is in creative self-expression or creative outlets or what you do for fun or joy or pleasure. And so the first thing that's going to happen is there could be this trigger, this ego uh, battle or a power struggle of creative projects or things that you're in charge of, 
or you having to face the challenges of where where are you in this group or in this network, like in the pecking order? Are you in charge of it? Is someone exerting control over you? Uh, this is a test of your inner strength, forcing you possibly to, to step up and take a leadership role, especially during uh, like an inconvenient time. Now, the positive that's going to come from all of this is the North Node in your seventh house of partnership. So the North Node, it's in this beautiful like trine with the direction of which you're going with best friends, significant others, partners, clients. The seventh house is you with other people. And so this could result in um, how you handle conflict and legal matters and negotiating these compromises. The seventh house is all contractual relationships and it's also legal matters. It's your connection to others through social promises or unwritten promises. And so the North node here has you highlighting personal growth in your networking skills and the need for you to align your actions with the, the correct people with your deepest goals. This aspect is really saying you need to take uh, you need to take the steps that resonate with your true self and um, who who are you supported with your your partner your spouse your best friend um, all of this is supporting your destiny and your purpose of stepping back out. Leo season for you is really going to shine brightly on your networking skills. It's going to be sharing your unique talents, your light with, with everybody that you come in contact with. So definitely prepare to embrace the joy that comes with the creative opportunities. This season is going to bring you many opportunities while also learning to navigate uh, power dynamics with uh, grace and strength. So Libra, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer full moon and new moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get up Updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Scorpio Sun and Scorpio Rising, the Sun is now moving into your career sector, your reputation, you being seen as an authority figure. The 10th house is like, it's the top of your chart that represents your life path. Um, it's your public life. It's, it's business related. It could be about promotions. It's your social status. The 10th house is where you want to make your mark on society. And so the Sun here is you making bold moves, you being very generous you being dramatic and having all of the light on you, everybody seeing your unique talents, taking these leadership roles, like stepping up to the plate, expressing yourself authentically. Now, the first thing that's going to happen is Pluto. Uh, you're going to have this opposition to Pluto where who you are is going to be in this difficult transit and triggering ego battles that have to do with, uh, this could be family and this could be anybody who lives in the home or ancestors. Um, this could have to do with tran uh, traditions, um, things being in conflict with uh, familial relationships or things that are going on here. And this could be like grandparents and that. And so this could be triggering a power struggle with who you authentically are and maybe them not being comfortable with it or are you are you sharing with everybody like what's going on wanting to have this this stable relationship uh, having a strong desire a need for control of what is going on within your home encountering others who possibly want to control you this could be authority figures um wanting to exert or take credit for something that you've done this period is really going to test your your inner strength and it can force you it can force your hand into a leadership role that um, it's it's like use caution for upstaging anybody now the positive that comes from all of this difficulty is the north node in aries it's in a harmonious trine to your sixth house of your daily habits the sixth house represents your um, daily work habits with your mental health, your physical health, its illness, its disease, and it's getting rid of old habits. The sixth house is looking to find a mentor or a guide or somebody that can support you and give you advice when you need it. 
The sixth house brings in topics that have to do with um, our relationship with coworkers. It can also bring in uh, topics that have to do with employees. And so um, uh, taking care of, nurturing, caring for, and uh, being supportive of. This will highlight uh, your personal growth that's needed in order for you to align all of your actions moving forward for your best and highest good. This aspect is really going to encourage you to take the steps that resonate with this is who I am, this is who I uh, this is who I want to be connected with, and I would love to be supported by a guide or a mentor because I I want to be my true self. And I feel that destiny and my purpose is moving forward um, with shining brightly, sharing my unique talents with the world. I need to prepare to embrace joy and creativity. I need to work on inner healing. These opportunities that Leo season brings is offering you the ability to tap into your inner child and to showcase your gifts and talents all while navigating the power dynamics that you are going to encounter with grace and strength. So Scorpio, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer full moon and new moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Sagittarius Sun and Sagittarius Rising, I absolutely love this for you because the Sun is now moving into your travel sector. It's encountering uh, foreign people, places, and things. It's studying things. It's diving into higher education, religion, philosophy, belief. It's publishing. It's legal matters. The Sun moving into the sign of Leo here is in trying to your first house of self. So we know that this is your identity and you saying, I need to be bold. I need to be generous. I am ready to experience these things. I want to connect with these people. I have these unique talents and I'm ready to take on some leadership roles. I want to express myself authentically. I want to tap into my inner child. I want to have faith and hope and belief and enjoy all of this. Now, the first thing that's going to happen is um, the sun is going to oppose Pluto. Now, an opposition is to Pluto is offering you an opportunity to turn over a new leaf. Pluto asks us in this area to um, change, grow, and evolve. And it's in your third house of communication. It's with neighbors and siblings and cousins, and it's uh, email, phone, text, and travel, and it's how you are communicating. And so this opposition can trigger an, an ego battle or a power struggle with the words that you want to share or the information that you want to share with other people. And this could either be what you're feeling within or with other people. This could be somebody wanting to take credit for something that you've done. So you might face some challenges that leave you feeling unstable or uncertain in the beginning and feeling the strong desire to want to control your destiny. Uh, maybe encountering others who want to have control over you with where you're going, what you're doing, and then disrupting some of your plans. This period's really going to test your inner strength and it may force you to uh, step up to the plate and pivot with your leadership roles or with your plans to move forward. Now, the positive thing that comes from this is the trine to the north node. Now, this is going to offer um, highlighting children, lovers, creative projects, where I'm willing to take a risk. The fifth house is fun and joy and uh, play and it's creativity, it's art and music and beauty and it's creative outlets. It's what we do for recreation and pleasure. And so having this trine here is aligning your actions with your deepest um, goals. The North Node is our direction. And so this aspect is really encouraging you to step up up, step out with what is resonating with your true self to face your fears. Pluto is just self-sabotage and facing your fears with the way that you're communicating, where you're wanting to go, things that you want to do. There's no limits. And so this is being supported by your sense of destiny and purpose. 
Leo season in your ninth house is going to invite you to shine brightly, connect with others, share your gifts, share your talents, and um, embrace this unique light that you have to give to others in the world. Prepare to embrace joy, creativity, um, opportunities that Leo season brings you, all while navigating the power dynamics with grace and strength. So Sagittarius, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer full moon and new moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Capricorn Sun and Capricorn Rising, the Sun is moving into your eighth house of your shared resources. This is you connected with other people. This can be business partners. This can be exes with alimony and child support. This can be uh, shared debt. The, the eighth house is you connected with other people with resources or money, with wills, or um, anything that has to do with other people's opinions, taxes, inheritances, insurance, your private affairs. The eighth house brings a light on taboo topics for you to bring to the open and to discuss. It's about being bold, being generous, having a flair for the dramatic, you having this unique talent and taking on a leadership role and saying, I have now come to this point where uh, we either need to part ways with this or we need to invest our money this way. The eighth house is the house of sexuality. It's addressing the problems head on. It's deep, it's psychological in nature, and it's saying, are we saving enough money for retirement? Uh, or how are my investments doing? It's wanting to have money and resources for play. It is tapping into your inner child. This can make some people uncomfortable, but it's you taking the leadership role and saying, I have to address these topics. Um, I have to pursue my passions and my, my resources are tied up with other people. And where are we? It's like looking at someone and saying, are, are we together on this? Or what does this look like for us? It's uh, a house where we address topics that nobody um, is comfortable discussing at the dinner table. And so what's highlighting this is going to be the first transit of opposing Pluto. Pluto is, is the planet of birth, death, and rebirth. It's the planet of transformation in your second house of your personal resources. This is you identifying what are the most important things to you. Is it money? Is it your skill set? Is it your resources? Is it your work ethic? Is it your self-esteem? Is it sensual pleasures? The second house represents what do I need in order to feel safe and secure and you taking stock of what do i need what do i have and where am i sharing these resources and making sure that you are sharing them with people that appreciate them so the opposition is saying there might be some ego battles here or some uncomfortable conversations that need to be addressed. And so it's going to test your inner strength and forcing you into a leadership role to make some decisions in order to move forward. Now, what's positive that's going to come from this is the north node in your fourth house of your home, your family, your foundation. You are doing this for your own security, for um, generations to come after, or from family that live within your home, uh, real estate, property, traditions. Remember that the fourth house not only represents the home that we live in, but it also represents our city, our town, our country. And so what you are working on is creating a stable foundation of which you need to build upon. And so it's highlighting personal growth that you need in order to build home life, stable home or stable traditions. And you need to align your actions with your deepest goals. And they need to be for you and looking at where are your resources tied up with other people. And this can be family members, exes, business partners, um, anybody that you are psychologically intertwined with. And so this aspect is really going to encourage you to, to step up 
and uh, speak out with topics that resonate with your true thoughts, um, with your destiny and your purpose of this is where we need to be moving forward with. Leo season is really going to invite you to um, share your, your unique gifts and talents um, with others and prepare to embrace these opportunities as they come up and navigate the power dynamics with, with grace and uh, dignity as you move forward and build your own st stable home life. Because this is, this is all about you and your connections with other people and wanting to make sure that you are always taking care of everybody else, making sure that you are taking care of yourself first. So Capricorn, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer full moon and new moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Aquarius Sun and Aquarius Rising, the Sun is now moving into your partnership sector. I absolutely love this for you because this is you focused on you and other people. It can be a business partner, it can be clients, it can be friends, it can be uh, a marital partner. It's you with love, you in contractual relationships. The seventh house is how do we handle conflict? How do we um, handle legal matters? Uh, it's it's social contracts and promises that are either written or uh, nonverbal, like expected. And so the sun moving into Leo here is going to offer you these bold actions of taking care of or wanting to include everybody else or wanting to be along and join other people with what they are doing and being kind to clients or people that you are um, in relationship with, like best friends, having a flair for the dramatic and being very generous with others. Um, showcasing your unique talents and taking on these leadership roles and expressing yourself authentically and showing your partners, uh, this could be again, best friends or marital partners, who you really are. Now, the, the sign of Pluto in your first house is going to be in opposition as soon as it moves into your seventh house. And this is going to trigger possibly like an ego battle or a power struggle between who you are, what you are presenting, like you wanting to say what you want to say, do what you want to say, like accept me the way I am and possibly feeling judged from others. Uh, now this could be all in your head or like within yourself or it could really be happening. And so you might face these challenges that um, uh, make you feel uncomfortable and feeling the strong desire to wanna to have control over some topics that come up, encountering others to, other people maybe wanting to take credit for something that you've done, wanting to change you, wanting to have control over you, um, changing the way you look, the way you act. Remember Pluto in your first house is your personality, your appearance, your power, your strength. And this is possibly like wanting to take away or you feeling this um, opposition between your partner or, and, and I'm gonna bring up open enemies and exes here because in an opposition, it could be those people that like creep into the story. Now on a positive, what comes from this is the communication with uh, the trine with the north node in your third house. The third house is neighbors, siblings, cousins, email, phone, text. It's where we talk and exchange ideas. The third house is where we openly network and make friends. It is the, the where we, um, how we say things. It's where we connect with other people. It's media, news, gossip, transportation, it's our computer, it's our emails, it's our phone. So you working your magic with this boldness and generosity and flair for the dramatic in the way that you communicate with people that are close to you in your social environment. This is going to highlight your personal growth that you've gone through. And this is your need to align with your deepest goals. And this aspect is really encouraging you to take the steps to resonate with your true authentic self of the way that you communicate and the way that you navigate things 
and you can change it and be one person with a client, be one person with your, your partner and be uh, somebody else with a best friend. It's how are you um, stepping outside of your comfort zone and resonating with your true self and supporting yourself by navigating your destiny and purpose with grace and strength because Pluto in your first house really is forcing you to transform and um, change, grow and evolve from the old you into the powerful new you to shine brightly and to share your unique light with the world. What gifts and talents do you have that you need to share and, and you need to embrace joy creativity these opportunities that leo season brings because this can connect you with somebody that maybe you want to sell a product to or a, like this is these are clients these are people that you network with and so all while navigating the power dynamics with grace and destiny. So Aquarius, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer full moon and new moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Pisces Sun and Pisces Rising, the Sun is now moving into your daily habit sector. This is what you do on a day-to-day -day basis in order to nurture and care for yourself. It's how we get rid of bad habits. The Sun here really has us focused on um, our pets or finding a guide, finding a mentor. Maybe I need a counselor. I need a Reiki practitioner. I need to go to a sound bath. I need uh, a massage. The sixth house brings in topics of how do I take care of myself, like self-care first and alternative health care before I nurture and care for others. The sixth house is um, the ending of old habits and the caretaking of first ourselves and then let me support you with what I've what I've learned, what I know. Now the first thing it's going to do is oppose Pluto in your 12th house. Pluto in your your 12th house really has you stopping and saying, I need to clear out my karmic debts. This could be mental, physical, spiritual, emotional, health, well-being. This is the broken record that goes on in your head where we go and it's self-sabotage. Pluto in your, your 12th house has you doing a lot of inner work of looking at ancestral lineage of this was passed down from one person to another and the buck stops here. I don't have to, um, this doesn't have to be part of my line anymore or I'm not going to... Um, I'm not going to have my children experience this because I experienced this and I don't want to experience this anymore. It's about the 12th house is hospitalizations and, and afflictions. And it's where we go to tap in for rest and recovery with spiritual retreats. And so the, tw uh, the 12th house having Pluto here has you doing a lot of deep inner work. And the sun in Leo says, let's be bold. Let's do that past life regression. Let's be generous and um, care for ourself first. Like give ourselves, it's self-love and it's uh, embracing your unique talents and taking upon a leadership role of, yeah, I, I, I want to I wanna meet for yoga and um, I'm going to schedule it. Like it's making the plans, making the time. It's you saying, I want to express myself authentically and I need to work through some healing uh, opportunities that the universe is offering me. I need to, um, I need to tap in and reveal these, these secrets that have been holding me back and I need to clear out my karmic debts. I'm here to heal myself. Um, because Pisces, you're watery, you're intuitive, you pick up everybody's energy any, anyway. And so what's coming from this is the North Node in your second house. This is going to be in a trine. So the North Node has you focused on your self-worth. What do you need in order to feel safe and secure? Now this could be money, finances, resources. This could be uh, your talents, your skill set. The second house represents your belongings. Uh, how do you support yourself? Your value system. This will have you doing a, a self check, highlighting your own 
personal growth that people will not be able to see on the outside, but you will uh, need to take to align yourself with your deepest goals that come from within. Because the second house is this is what I need mentally or emotionally or spiritually resource wise. I need this kind of a friend. I need this amount of money to feel safe and secure. I need this home. It's you taking stock of what do you need in your life and making sure that you put your needs first. You take care of your health, your well-being, and take care of your needs before you support other people. This aspect is really going to encourage you to um, step up and do things that resonate with your true self, supported by destiny and purpose of the North Node. Leo season occurring with your sixth house is really going to have this unique light of different healing modalities that are out there in order for you to approach and try. This could be tapping, this could be like yoga, meditation, this could be, um, it could be in like any different healing modality that is out there and preparing for you to embrace daily joy and creativity with opportunities that this healing journey is going to bring you all while navigating the power dynamics that you're going through with healing your inner child with grace and strength. So Pisces, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer full moon and new moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe.